What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're out here doing another salvage job. If you look right here to my right, you notice this big metal barge here. Well, we're actually going after another big metal barge. It's actually sunk in about 25 foot right off the point here. And so we've got to go down try to locate it, see what made it sink, and then see if we can get it raised up as well. Now it's a muddy day, so our gear is probably going to get pretty torn up today. But hopefully it's going to be a clear day. It's nice and cold out, which it's winter time right now. But hopefully with everything calmed down, not many boats out on the water, hopefully it's going to be nice and clear and we can actually see what we're doing. We're going to go get geared up. We're going to jump in and see how well we do. Just to give you a little more background of where we're actually diving, this is a port down on Lake Norman that is ran by a water construction company. So they build docks, they do salvage, they do things like that. And one of their big barges actually sunk, and this is the location where it sunk. This is a pretty straight drop off here. It goes from about zero feet to about five or six feet, and then it shears off straight down to 20 feet. Um, I've actually got my daughter here with us. A lot of you guys know I homeschool my oldest daughter. And so she's out learning uh, mathematics and everything else because I'm trying to teach her lift theory and things like that uh, throughout the day during her schoolwork. And this is a great chance to do that or a great opportunity to do that because she can learn uh, what I have to do for a living and she can learn why math is so important. So I've actually got her here with us today. This is uh, one of our instructors. You guys have met him before, uh, Instructor Owenby. And we're just taking our time. We're getting our gear unloaded. And we're going to make sure that we get everything put together the way it needs to be. Um, when you do salvage work like this, take your time, guys. This is not a rescue operation. This is simply a recovery operation is all it is. So you got all the time in the world to make sure you do good, thorough gear checks. Make sure everything is the way it needs to be so that you can be as safe as possible. So here I am just putting my gear together, just making sure everything's good to go. Um, and just like I said, taking my time, making sure I'm very methodical here. We want to get a good game plan here. We're also going to do a just a thorough inspection of the barge that's out of the water just so that we can have a better idea of what we're looking at when we're underwater. So that's what we're doing here. And then, of course, we also want to look at the equipment that we're going to be using underwater and these caps that we're going to have to be replacing on the sunken barge we're just kind of getting an idea of how they're installed uh, basically they're they're going to be held down by gravity and once we have the pipes installed and the suction pulled on it um, they're just going to be fit in say via friction or whatnot so uh, there's going to be zero chance of these caps coming off once they're installed and once we have uh, suction put on um, the worker here is putting some final touches on the caps themselves so that uh, once everything is in place all that we should have to do is just start pumping water out and theoretically the vessel should actually float All right, guys, so now it's time to get down to the knit and gritty. It's time to get wet. Um, we are going to do one final gear check here. We're going to make sure all our gear is in proper working order. We're going to assist each other in getting dressed, uh, as we always do on every dive, and form a game plan here and then head down to the water and get started. Now, as we walk in, like I said earlier, this is a very, very sloppy mess. Um, this is going to be a pretty dirty job. Now, thankfully, the water visibility wasn't as bad as what we thought it was going to be. But all in all, just getting down to the water's edge was a pretty sloppy job. Uh, we are in dry suits. Obviously, it's wintertime, and we got a lot of other restrictive gear on today, uh, specifically speaking of these helmets here. And I do want to make a little note on these helmets. A lot of people ask, why do you wear these helmets if you're not in an overhead environment? Well, in short, it gives us a place to mount our cameras for you guys to see. Uh, and, of course, it gives us hands-free operations of our lights as well. So that's one reason that we wear them here. And I know somebody's going to ask, because you've asked in a previous video why are you not wearing a full face mask you're doing salvage work you're doing some type of public safety job here why are you not in a full face mask where you can have comms and protection from the environment uh, there is a specific reason on a lot of these dives that you will see in the future that we are not wearing full face mask um, we are a strong advocate for full face mask and they do have their place um, however in this particular situation always having a full face mask it kind of restricts our communications with everybody that's on the surface so with that being said we chose not to wear it here um, 
but here we're down on the barge we're just going to do a quick inspection and we're going to try to locate the portholes that we need to cap and kind of see the condition that they're in uh, basically what made this barge sink is the portholes were open and of course it had too much weight on it took on a lot of rain started to go under and as soon as it started to go under it just of course filled up with water and and that was the end of it but here's one of the portholes here and just to make our life a little bit easier so that we're not having to constantly search for it in the event that we do stir up the visibility we're going to go ahead and mark this with an smb uh, i'm just going to tie off an smb here shoot it to the surface and that way we have a permanent marker so that when we come back to this specific location we can just drop down that marker line and not have to constantly go down the anchor line or the chain and, and search around to try to find it. We can always come back to this very specific point. So I'm going to shoot a quick SMB here on this one, and then, of course, we'll shoot back over to the uh, porthole that's on the stern of the barge as well. I'm going to shoot a quick SMB on that, and that way both of them will be marked. This by far definitely makes our job a lot easier as well. Um, now that we're back here at the back, of the stern of the barge we're going to go ahead and locate the uh, second porthole that we've got to cover up and we're going to go ahead and put an smb on it like i said guys th this makes our job a thousand times easier you'll see here very soon in the video we're we're carrying some pretty heavy equipment down with us and to be able to drop directly where we need to install this equipment makes our life a whole lot easier versus always dropping down on a specific point and swimming over and trying to locate it um, because this is dirty work guys this is not something that we're um, just constantly holding neutral buoyancy and perfect trim on we're laying on top of this this is very dirty work when we do this so a lot of times we do stir up the visibility we are working in the blind and having these markers um, in place makes our job a whole lot easier so here you can see the other diver here he's just installing the uh, secondary smb there and we're going to tie it up and that way we have two permanent lines of where we need to install the porthole covers or the the caps here um, and it just makes things a whole lot easier for us uh, later on during the job now that we've got those installed we're just going to do a quick overall inspection of the barge so we're going to start looking at each porthole see if it's um, going to be mangled up see if there's anything that would restrict us from putting the caps on we're also going to swim around the barge and just give it an overall look over uh, looking for cracks looking for holes looking for damage anything that would kind of stick out and let us know uh, if we start pumping here is there going to be water coming in faster than what we're pumping out things like that so that's what I'm doing here. As you can see, I already found a crack. I mean, just right there on the very edge of the barge, you can see this crack here. That that little crack is a level of concern because once we get things installed and we start pumping water out, that means water is coming to those areas just as fast as we're pumping it out. And technically, we're just pumping the lake right back into the lake. So little areas like that is what we're taking note of right now. And we're just kind of marking them. That way it gives us a better idea of what we need to do uh, later on during the salvage itself to make sure that we can get a proper seal and get this barge lifted where it needs to be. All right, we're back at the surface. We're talking to the surface crew, and he's going to hand down the first cap. These caps weigh about 35 to 40 pounds per uh, cap, um, and they can be a struggle. Like I said, you can imagine us if we're going down that chain right there that's below that buoy, and we're having to swim over and try to locate, trying to control this on the way down can be a pain. So it's a lot easier for us to, just to swim over to our marker buoy to where we know the porthole is, and we can do a quick descent down and quickly install it and not have to struggle with it as well because it's probably about 15 feet away from our marker to uh, where the main buoy is there so at 15 foot of distance if it's limited viz and we're trying to carry this 35 40 pound, pound system can be a pain in the butt yeah obviously we could put a lift bag and move it a lot easier but that's even more equipment that we're trying to deal with underwater doing it this way makes things a whole lot simpler for us we're just going to do a quick descent here uh, we're not very deep here i think we're maybe about 10 maybe 15 foot deep something like that um but we're going to try to install this for first port plug real quick and we're just going to take it in stages so once we have the uh, port covers uh, installed 
then of course we are going to hook up um, the suction pipes to it we're going to put vent pipes in it and what the vent pipe actually does that allows air to be sucked into the hull of this vessel as we're sucking out the water uh, or trying to pump out the water and what that allows for is it gives us a little bit more lift and buoyancy to hopefully raise this barge up but here we're down you can see our marker line there from our smb and we're going to just give it a second or two to try to get some things cleared up and we're going to go ahead and try to start to install this first port system um, it's not a very difficult uh, installation it's just kind of meticulous but just because of how heavy it is we've got to get that pvc pipe um, positioned in the right place and there is a little crossbar in this port here and so we got to make sure we get everything turned just right so that as we install it we can get the vent pipe installed as well and the suction pipe and not be hitting that crossbar bar and you can see that crossbar there so we're just kind of getting it positioned in the right place trying to get it turned and we're going to just let gravity seal it um, yes it's just metal on metal it's not sealed it doesn't have a rubber gasket or anything like that but as heavy as it is it's going to create a good seal so that once we do start pumping water out it will create a seal for us and we can just let the physics work for us there but once we get this first one installed we'll go ahead and move back to the stern and get it installed as well and it's not that difficult all we got to do is just line up the pipes make sure everything's good to go gravity will pull this thing down into position for us especially once we start to suction and of course we'll have a good proper seal now that we got the first one, we're going to move on back to the second one here and get it installed as well. And it's just the same procedure. We're going to get everything lined up, get the PVC lined up into the hole properly, uh, make sure that we're not hitting the crossbar, make sure that the crossbar is also not in the way of the vent pipe itself, um, and then just get it positioned. The position is, is very, very important here um, because we do want it to sit flush if it doesn't sit flush once we start to suction we're not going to have a seal there so we're just going to take our time make sure everything's squared up where it needs to be uh, get it installed and you'll see us we'll pick it up a couple of times get it twisted into place and then once it seats it's there um, it's not something we have to constantly check on there we've got it set and now it's time to get the suction pipes installed uh, these are just regular old sump pump hoses here i think this is a four inch diameter hose um, but i'm gonna take it down and that pvc pipe let's talk about that real quick that you saw on the port cap it's actually got threads on it so as i take this pipe down i can just very simply thread this on it's not like i'm trying to put clamps on it i'm not trying to shove it in a hole and seal it with uh, 5200 or something like that i can just go down i can thread this uh, sump pump hose directly onto it and then they can start to suction now before we do that of course we have to install the vent pipes and we need to go around and make sure that all the little holes that we found during our inspection are covered as well because if there's water coming in at the same speed that we're pumping it out then it's going to kind of be pointless to even try to pump for us but here i'm just getting the hose installed it's a very simple procedure just take the sump pump hose put it down on the fitting itself and then screw it into position until it holds and then we can actually start the pumping procedure once those vent pipes are installed as well So now that we've got everything installed there, you can see the vent pipe sticking up there. And like I said, the, the purpose of that vent pipe is to be able to suck atmospheric air down into the hole as we're pumping the water out. Now, the last thing to do is to try our best to seal what holes we can. Now, we're not underwater welders here. We're not going under to uh, close off any of these holes. All we're trying to do is get this vessel up so that they can get it out and we're not that far from land. Right now at the bow, I'm, you know, I'm not very deep and we're probably only about 40 foot off the shoreline. We're just trying to get it up enough that they can get it pulled out and they can do a good proper weld uh, at the surface. Basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take sheets of plastic and I'm going to try to seal these little crack areas that we found 
in the bow earlier. Now this is going to show you a good representation of delta P which I talked about in a previous video where I was working on a swimming pool. You will see as there's suction going in there delta P basically says if there's more pressure on one side than there is the other then you're going to have that suction effect and here you'll see as soon as I install the plastic over those holes you'll see delta P take on or differential pressure take on. And so that's why that plastic's kind of stayed into place here. And it also goes to show you just how much water is coming through there. Yeah, we're sucking a lot of water out of the out of the hole with the suction or the sump pumps, but at the same time, it's sucking water into there. So as much as we're taking out, it's just filling in as well. But basically here, I'm just installing the plastic over that. This is just a band-aid, guys. I promise you, this is not how they're going to fix this. This is simply a band-aid just so that we can get it to the surface. Once again, we've not been hired to fix this for them. We've simply been hired to try to lift it up to the surface or to get it to a point where it can lift itself by pumping the water out of it. But basically, that's what I'm doing here, sealing up this, and we're going to pump on it a little bit and see if that actually works. Now that we've got everything installed, it's basically just a hurry up and wait game. We're going to come up to the surface, we're going to start pumping water, and we're going to see what happens. Alright guys, so we're getting finished up today, and if you can't tell by behind me, the barge still ain't floating. Uh, we've been pumping on it all day long. We've got the new caps put on it. We've got um, some suction pipes or uh, vent pipes in it so they can suck air in as they're pumping the water out. Unfortunately, it just ain't floating. On our very last dive today, we actually found quite a few cracks. We actually found a crack that was about one inches in uh, width, and it was probably about six to seven foot long grand total. So we've got that covered now, and they're going to continue to pump several more hours, see if they can get this thing floating. If not, they're probably going to hire us to come back out in the morning, and we're just going to get two wreckers out here, take down the, the cables to it, and they're just going to pull it out. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I also want you to understand that you're not always going to be successful. You're going to have times like this when things just simply do not work out. What do you do? Well, you learn from it and you move on and you become better in the future. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer the questions the best I can. If you did like it, give me the big thumbs up. Definitely share the video as well. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.